deck, like the recent support for the deck in Phantom Nightmare was really, 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 really good. And there is the fist bump. They are starting their round. They're starting their day two. And so are we with them. And on the other hand, we have Han with two draws in the tournament already. And his Labyrinth deck. And the Labyrinth deck is going to do what it likes best, honestly, going first here. Normal summon Ariana it is. And Ariana searches out Arias. Arias, I mean, we talked about good support for a deck. Arias, of course, was insane support for the Labyrinth strategy, and there we see it. Using her to activate the trap card on our first turn right away. Discarded it to bring the big welcome Labyrinth to the field, and immediately having the chance to activate it, we summon out the lovely bring that Ariana back to our hand, and that means we can trigger the Lovely right away to immediately destroy one card out of the opponent's hand. But maybe, because Eva paired up his deck with Unchained cards, that could be a good hit, but no, it is the Samsara Lotus there. That is one of the most recent support cards for the deck. That is the Samsara D Lotus, of course. And <laughs> Han takes a quick read, and this card really was what the deck needed, because you can tribute the Samsara D Lotus and special summon a Jubel monster from your deck, which is pretty insane. And then doing your opponent's turn when the monster effect is activated while you control a Jubel monster, you can actually tribute this card, and that the effect then becomes. It's one of those cards that just changes the effect. It does become destroy one Jubel monster on the field, and... You, you want your opponent to destroy Jubel monsters. That's all the deck is about, basically. But for now, that card just ended up in the graveyard. Let's see what Eva has to offer here. Okay, Eva has another copy, so he didn't even mind it that much. Normal summon Samsara D. Lotus, and again, <laughs> Han is taking over the card, reading it real quick. Understandably so. The card still... It, it's not from the newest set from Legacy of Destruction, but from the set before, so it's definitely still a recent card from a not super popular meta deck. Jubel now is one of the decks that can be expected to, here and there, get into a top cut. But oh my, there is the super polymerization being chained to the big welcome labyrinth activation, fusing away both of Han's monsters here. So Han had a strong first turn. Oh wait, no, it's our own Samsara D. Lotus and the Lovelies. So the second monster for Han is just coming out. But now the big welcome labyrinth is so much weaker because we summon out a monster, but it has to go back to hand right away. And the Lovely is not going to be there capitalizing on it. So that super polymerization was definitely worth it, bringing out Garura there. So next up, Cutting the deck, what does Eva have to offer? Because sadly, though, he did, of course, now lose his normal summon. He normal Samsara the Lotus, and then he had to fuse it away right away with the Super Polymerization. And there comes the... Okay, there is the effect now of L Lady Labyrinth to special summon it out. Triple Tactic Talons was just waiting for that. We are drawing two cards here. Eva having good cards going second with the Super Polymerization and Triple Tactic Talons combination. All right, we're not done yet. Nightmare is going to be activated. Nightmare Pain, to be exactly. And Nightmare Pain says, during a main phase, you can just destroy one Dark Monster in your hand or phase up on the field. And if you do, add one Jubel to your hand or just a card that mentions it. Ooh, but we are going to respond to that by activating Trap Trick. And there is a second copy of Super Polymerization! This can't be real! So, of course, Eva immediately denying also the on-field effect of Lady Labyrinth here to set another trap card, refusing away our own Garua, which already was a Super Polymerization target, and the opponent's monster into a Mud Dragon now. So Eva, I mean, he has to give up a lot of cards in hand for all of that, but he's also denying so many things here for Han as well, because the Labyrinth deck is just so good at accumulating resources, at getting more and more cards into play. And Eva is doing a very good job at uh, hindering Han from that. But yeah, Nightmare Pain then can search a card that mentions Jubel or Jubel itself, but first Han is going to resolve that trap trick here. So... Also true, I mean, it would have been kind of funny if he would have destroyed uh, a Jubel in the opponent's hand with the Lovely. So that lovely is actually kind of dangerous using it on the uh, on the hand of the opponent. Ooh, we decided to set Big Welcome Labyrinth here, which is a very interesting choice, as we already activated Big Welcome Labyrinth this turn. 
And that also means that all of our big welcome labyrinths are now in play. One is in the graveyard, one is in the banished zone, and one is now set on the field, but cannot be used this turn. So we also now activate the effect of Mud Dragon, most likely calling Dark, as this is an, as this is an all dark deck, basically. And that means Han would not be able to target anymore. On the other hand, I actually I like the decision of Han to set the big welcome labyrinth there, as he can only activate one more trap for the rest of the turn. Because of the restriction of trap trick, and probably the other trap he has there is the one he wants. Okay, there comes the Samsara D Lotus again through the opening of the spirit gates. We could special summon that out. We're checking the set card. Oh, I could see it a Ruma Karma Cannon or something like that coming, not gonna lie. That would be one of those trap cards that I could expect here. He's also running it as a free off, so I would really not be surprised. But oh, there is Spirit of Yubel coming down now. I love how Eva, even though he goes second against Labyrinth here right now, he's already showing us all the tools of the deck. Spirit of Yubel, of course, also one of the new support cards of the deck. And uh, he just brought it out there with ease. And uh, is he is he going to use the oh, oh, oh and he I was surprised when I saw his deck list because we are really running all of the new Jubel cards. We're even running the new spell card called Ma Major Chronicle, and that is a permanent spell card saying each time a monster is special summoned that is a Jubel monster or that mentions Jubel, place one Chronicle counter on this card, and then you can remove Chronicle counters from your field to activate one of the effects. Just remove one to special summon a Jubel from your graveyard, already pretty good. Two, to add a banished card to your hand, just any of them actually, which is pretty insane. And then for free you can uh, banish one card from your deck, for four you can destroy one card on the field, and for five you can just actually search the original Super Polymerization from your deck to your hand, which is kind of correct as well. Okay, but we are not done there just yet because there is a card that is going to ruin the plans of Han here. We are going for Nibiru, the primal being. And we are... Oh, and we had the chance to also go for Stovi Torby. Stovi Torby was chained, discarding the Nibiru. So we are not summoning out the Nibiru nor the token, but we get to set one monster from... Uh, one spell and trap card from our deck, and I don't think Eva... Let's see for game number two. Let's see what Jubel can do going first. It looked fine going second there, but let's see what it is capable of doing going first. We start off with terraforming, and now we are seeing one of the support cards from Legacy of Destruction. We are, of course, searching for, honestly, one of the most powerful support cards that that could have imagined. We are searching for the Nightmare Throne. And when that card is activated, you can take one Fiend Monster with zero attack and zero defense from a deck and either add it to your hand or destroy it. And that is what he is going to do here right away. And it looks like we just searched out Samsara D. Lotus again. Indeed, we did. Norman summoning the Samsara D. Lotus. And again, I think I feel like Hard is just constantly reading some Sarah D. Lotus. And yep, you can search without Nightmare Throne, not just a super good support card for the Jubel deck, but you can for example also play this card in Unchained. We're playing a, a small Unchained engine in our own deck here for Ivar, but you could technically also play it in just a pure Unchained deck. So overall a really good support card for Fiend decks in general, but Han wants to activate the effect of Arias. That does not only work on our first turn of the entire game, but also, of course, if our opponent is starting, we can just use that in a, in, as an interruption before we even had a turn. We are setting Dogmatica Punishment from our hand, immediately being able to activate it, targeting the Samsara D. Lotus that is going to resolve. We're grabbing our extra deck. Han is going to... Send? What are we sending? Oh, we're sending Antis. So we do not only want to get rid of the Samsara D. Lotus, but also we're trying to get rid of that Nightmare Throne. Are we? I mean, we, we have the option to. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I was about to say, we probably should do that. Now, that might play into Triple Tactic Talents, though. We saw Talents last turn, and there is Talents again this turn. I don't honestly know whether it was so necessary to destroy the Nightmare Throne there, because now that just gives Eva the option to even activate the Triple Tactic Talents, and he is going to go for a draw two here, 
And let's not forget that Han, for this interaction, invested two cards out of his opening hand, but it is worth it. It is so worth it when your opponent can just set one card and pass it over hand now, even though only four cards in hand, also only facing one set card on the opponent's side of the field. That is not the start Eva was looking for here in game number two, and Han now has it in front of him. Oh, but he also doesn't uh, plan a very long turn, as he's just going for a set three cards into his spell and trap zone, set the last card out of his hand as a monster even, and that goes back over to Eva. Eva goes for the normal summon of Dark Beckoning Beast this time. For consistently normal summoning, we already saw the opening of the Spirit Gates in the last game, but in this game we have the other piece of the engine, we have the Dark Beckoning Beast here. And we are therefore searching out the opening of the Spirit Gates. Immediately activating the opening of the Spirit Gates. Also, you might be wondering, why did we set that monster there as Han? Because in modern Yu-Gi-Oh, you honestly don't see uh, setting monsters that often anymore. But there's a pretty easy explanation for that, I believe. Probably, or even most likely, there should be Big Welcome Labyrinth somewhere along those set cards in the back row of Han. And uh, therefore, you want to summon out Lovely, and then you can just take back that set monster to your hand. Look at that, there is Big Welcome Labyrinth. And there is Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring, though, from Han, uh, from Ivar, denying the special summon from the deck, denying Lovely coming out. But we get the Arias instead, as he responded to one of our Labyrinth cards. All right. Oh, we're destroying Yubel. Wait, uh, is it this? Oh, it's just discarding, right? Yeah, just you discarded the spirit of Yubel, but you also brought back the spirit of Yubel there. So for the first time, we have spirit of Yubel now sitting on the field, sitting pretty there with zero attack points. But that is, uh, doesn't matter to Yubel monster because it cannot be destroyed by battle. Also, you know, you don't take any battle damage from battles involving this card. And if Spirit of Jubel is destroyed, you can special summon one of your Jubels that is banished or in your hand or in your deck or in your graveyard, basically from anywhere. And we are now going to search out Eternal Favorite from our deck, which is the trap card. We already saw Eva activating Super Polymerization here multiple times in the first game. But this card basically is an in archetype card for the Jubel deck that is also super polymerization because once per turn you can just activate one of these effects special summon one of the Ubel monsters when it's banished or in your graveyard um, already cool but if you control a Ubel monster there's a second effect you could use and that says that reads discard one card and send this face up card to the graveyard fusion summon one fusion monster from your exile using monsters from either side which is what super polymerization would do as well and usually you go for Ubel the loving defender forever and that one can use um, one Jubel monster plus one effect monster on the field, so it would be totally legal for that. Okay, but we keep on going. So far, Han with no additional. So far, with no additional damage. Because he's he's holding his cards in the spell and trap zone there. Okay, there comes Shavara. I was talking about the Unchained package in his deck, and that is Shavara destroying Spirit of Jubel. Oh no, it was already one step ahead. It was already the Jubel. And we do also play the next form. We are going to bring out Jubel, Terror Incarnate. Oh, what a day this is. We're seeing the old school Jubel cards making a comeback. I love this. And Jubel, the Terror Incarnate. Okay, that forces Han to now activate Trap Trick. Telling his opponent, okay, I'm only going to activate one more trap card this turn. But what if this trap card is, like, really, really powerful? What if it is, like, Daruma Karma Cannon or something like that? And it is going to be Daruma Karma Cannon indeed. It is indeed going to be that. So we are setting it. And what's next? Do we just immediately go for it? I think if we activate the trap trick, we also immediately want to activate the card that we're bringing out. And indeed, there is the Daruma Karma Cannon taking care of the entire field. And I... Oh, okay. We're going to chain the trap card. We're going to chain escape there. Oh. 
Oh, but look at that. We also have the Gruesome Grave Skirmer, which was a very, very good support card from Legacy of Destruction as well. Common card there. The Aruma Karma Cannon now is taking care of most of the monsters there on the field, putting them into the face-down defense position, sending the Yama to the graveyard afterwards. But that Grave Skirmer, as its name would suggest, can now squirm back from the graveyard, maybe. And that is indeed what it is going to do. We are going to banish it from the graveyard to then summon one feed monster with zero attack, zero defense from your hand or graveyard, which is going to be the original Yubel again. He is back. Welcome back to the field, Yubel, attacking into Arias. But of course, the original Yubel also reads that you take no battle damage from battles involving this card. And then, with the Nightmare Pain on the field, your opponent actually gets that damage. So Ivar now putting in the first damage, even though he attacked with a monster that has zero attack. How classic is that? How unconventional of a way of dealing damage is this? So we have the first life points damage here on our hands. And in the end phase, we're going to destroy Yubel Terror Incarnate. And we're going to bring back Samsara the Lotus. <laughs> and for, for some reason, Han, for I think the fifth time at the very least in this match, is going to read some Sari Lotus. And he doesn't read any of the other cards, which just consistently focusing on that some Sari Lotus, which, to be fair, is a pretty uh, key piece to the deck, and therefore you definitely don't want to get that card wrong. But does now Han find a way to come back into this game? We have Big Welcome Labyrinth in the graveyard, which is an interruption and they're therefore pretty, pretty good. But what else is there? Also, let's not forget there is a sad card in the, for, uh, for, in the spell and trap zone for Ivar. Right, really thinking this through. We are now able again to... Ooh, it was a back check in there, actually. That's that back check. Okay, okay. Eternal favorite. We searched for it. I explained to you what it does. It's, an, it's another way of being a super polymerization. We discard from our hand Spirit of Jubel and Han has to read that. Yes, it sends itself for cause to the graveyard there as well for its own effect. And we are just going to bring out another Jubel monster. All the Jubel monsters coming to the field here. We saw the original one. We saw Spirit. We saw the Terror Incarnate. And now the Fusion Monster. Jubel, the loving defender forever, is also going to come to the field i'm pretty sure or maybe is it going to be that one or do we just go for two monsters with our opponent Ooh! or in response han can still actually activate the effect of big welcome labyrinth to be fair and we are going to do that we are indeed going to do that we're bringing back check back to our hands And, okay, now we have to fuse with our own monsters in the end, which still works. And yes, you with a loving defender forever has now entered the field. But that was not really, I think, what he was trying to do there, to be honest. And now we, of course, pick up Yubel the loving defender. I, I love the name, Yubel the loving defender forever. And funnily enough, I don't really know why that matters, but if this card is fusion summoned, you can inflict 500 damage to your opponent for each material used. So it's actually just an additional way to bringing Eva closer to ending this game as Han now just lost another 1,000 life points. The, the Yubel deck is, is kind of gimmicky in its way of, of winning because we're attacking with monsters that have zero attack, still dealing damage to our opponent. Now, Yubel, the loving defender forever, also dealt a thousand damage just by uh, pure effect damage. So, that can sometimes just be the end, uh, just be the game ender real quick. So, we move on. Welcome Labyrinth was activated. Han once again checking, is there anything else I'm missing? And that is very, very much a good thing to do when you are playing against a deck that you're not 100% familiar. Just ask your opponent 
whether there's anything that you're missing. Just read your opponent's cards. You want to be aware of what's going on. You want to be in control of the game, even though you may not 100% be aware of what the opponent's deck is trying to do. I mean, I think even if Han has not played against Yubel before, he kind of sees what it's supposed to do now at the moment, because we just saw the opponent attacking with a monster of zero attack. You saw all of those monsters kind of all have zero attack. And um, we are now going to use the effect of Yubel the Loving Defender Forever on the summon of the Chandralia, I believe. Or I think we just... Wait, we just explained the effect further, I think. Yeah, yeah, because it, there is no effect that could trigger here, I believe. I'm sorry, the Lotus. Oh, back check is being used now. And Han is smiling while resolving that back check. He really wants a powerful trap there, I believe. Back check also almost as old as Jubel cards, to be honest, but still in those Labyrinth decks. Also recently has found new success in Paleozoic strategies again, but uh, such an all-time great card for trap decks overall. Okay. We did reorganize the top three cards of our deck, but it does not seem like Han is going to do a whole lot more after that. What is going to be the next move? Is there even a next move? It looks like Ivar is actually just uh, grabbing his cards rather right now. So I would assume that maybe Ivar is the one leading the charge now. Maybe we just pass the turn over back to our Yubel player. Indeed we did! We just used the effect of Nightmare Pain. We destroy the Samsara Lotus, bring out Spirit of Yubel. And grab our deck to search out another spell card there, which is another copy, of course, of Nightmare Pain. Ivar, honestly, by the way he moves, he just looks like he's in control there. He knows this one is going better for him. The first game, kind of a bummer, but this one looks a whole lot better for him now. Already dealing some damage, already bringing the opponent down to 4,500 life points. Now searching for the gruesome Grave Skirmer as well. Bringing out Yubel. So... What's next, though? What's our next move, Han? A very interesting question you could ask yourself is, with all that gimmicky damage coming from monsters with zero attack that deal the battle damage to your opponent when you would be losing life points, what actually does happen if your opponent just doesn't summon monsters, you know? Like, if you don't give them the wiggle room to, to deal that gimmicky battle damage with zero attack monsters, what would you do when your opponent doesn't have monsters on the field uh, where you could do that with? But, I mean, we are playing our Unchained engine here, and therefore we can just actually summon out monsters with actual attack points. For example, we just Link Summoned into the Yama there. And from there on, we keep on going. Shavara also onto the field, and that is going to add up in terms of damage here. We are almost there. Yep, the Loving Defender Forever does have zero attack as well, for sure. But... Yeah, so the Loving Defender Forever is actually a, a little bit different in, a, in the way it acts, because it says at the end of the damage, at the end of the... Da -da 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 -da, let me just double check... Yeah, inflict damage to your opponent equal to that opponent's monster's attack, so... Uh, and if you do, you banish that monster. So additionally to just dealing damage, it also will take care of the monster, which is pretty good. So, check in the graveyard real quick there. Yubel and Yubel the Loving Defender Forever. Plus, we have now linked up into our Unchained engine as well. We brought out the Unchained Yama there. No, wait. Yama is already gone again. We are right now enjoying ourselves Unchained Soul of Rage on the field. And it seems like we're entering the battle phase. Indeed we do. And that is going to be 1,800 through the attack of Unchained Soul of Rage. 
I mean, I, I was saying we are setting up damage here through our Unchained engine, but I feel like if we would have just stuck with the Unchained Soul of Lord of Yama and with the Shavara, that would have been a lot more damage than just this, to be honest. But instead, we just go for the 1800 through the Unchained Soul of Rage. And okay, we bring back through the Grave Skirmer our Samsara the Lotus now. We're going to destroy Yubel. And what's what's next? We ba Okay, that does trigger our Yama, of course. Yes, that's of course the Yama in the graveyard is actually valuable because now by destroying our own cards, we will be able to special summon from the graveyard a monster, of course, which was the plan all the way. Eva, which one are we going to go for now? Another copy of Samsara the Lotus by the looks of it. And now Eva himself will read... I will have a proper read of that Samsara the Lotus, figuring out whether you can actually do that. And I think we just went into the end phase. Eva, so the question actually was uh, was definitely right. What if your opponent just doesn't give you monsters to play with, you might be in a bit of a trouble because Eva had problems here, even though he had a lot of monster Xs to deal 4,500 life points damage. And now it's the end phase. Now, we use Welcome Labyrinth for Han, we bring out our monster, which is Ariana in that case, and Ariana is also going to use its effect to give ourselves another Labyrinth card, of course. Which one is it going to be? Maybe it's Dovi Torby. Maybe another copy of Big Welcome Labyrinth or something like that. It is going to be the Dovi Torby. Generally, you're already in the graveyard. Interestingly enough, did we even activate the backjack effect in the graveyard? Because I did not see him set a card for that. Oh, look at that. Apparently, there was no trap card to get. And now we're gambling on the fact that there is a trap card in the end phase. And there is a trap card in this trap trick. What a card to hit there. That was perfect for Han. Just reorganizing his deck through shuffling it after we summon the monster and search the card. And then... Just having a look. What is the top card right now? We may as well use the effect of backcheck, and it turns out to be a trap trick, which is one of the most powerful trap cards in his entire deck. That is actually huge for him here. How about just getting that trap trick there off the top? He will be very, very, very satisfied with that, not gonna lie. An actual heart of the card moment. You would have drawn that for turn as well, which would have been decent, but getting it for free is even better. Just setting it to your field, even being able to activate it in that end phase now. So after resolving the regular Welcome Labyrinth, maybe this is now our way into Big Welcome Labyrinth. Yeah, he's considering it. Indeed, we're banishing Big Welcome Labyrinth, and we are going to set another copy of it to the field. And we don't waste any time. We, of course, also just immediately activate that one. And I think this is now calling... The thing is, Lovely Labyrinth is kind of tricky against Yubel because you don't really want to destroy cards. You don't want to destroy the Unchained cards. You don't want to destroy the Yubel cards. So you don't really want to go after the cards in hand because those could be these cards potentially. But first of all, oh yeah, we're going to trigger Welcome Labyrinth. We're going to trigger the Chandelier. Welcome Labyrinth setting itself back to the field. Chandelier coming back to the hand from the graveyard. Wait, it seems like we did not even decide to activate the effect of Lovely. I like that, honestly. We decided, hey, I don't think it's a good idea to destroy cards here. And therefore, we just passed on the effect of Lovely. On the other hand, maybe just destroy maybe the opening of the Spirit Gates or something. That could have been all right, honestly. But we now activate the effect of Stovey Torby and we set the field spell. Labyrinth, Labyrinth to the field. And, of course, you would think, why do we not respond to that at all with our Samsara the Lotus? But you got to remember, Samsara the Lotus only is a quick effect during your opponent's turn. Therefore, that does not work. Okay, now the turn of Han again. He was, his life points were diminished to 2,700, but he's still in a very good position of making things happen here. So, let's continue.
Oh no, we are going to trigger Welcome Labyrinth. We're going to trigger Stoby Torby and Chandelier. And when you see that kind of a chain going off for a Labyrinth player, you sure don't like it because that was just through activating one card, he got three cards for free. That's Stoby Torby to the field being special summoned, now potentially being able to use that as synchro fodder. Then also the Welcome Labyrinth, of course, being set on the field and that Chandelier being a resource in the graveyard. And when you cannot really rely on destroying monsters on the opponent's side of the field, how about banishing them? Because I am already anticipating a big Chaos Angel coming down here, which is a Synchro 10, which we already have access to right now. So. And also, Chaos Angel, handily enough, is uh, a Fiend monster, and therefore... Even though activating Welcome Labyrinth or something like that before, you are not bothered by that at all, as you can just summon it after those cards have been activated. Normal summoning the Chandrillion next, using the effect of Lovely Labyrinth. Setting Dogmatica Punishment to our field. And now, <laughs> checking the opponent's graveyard, making sure there's no Yama waiting, there's no big surprises waiting in the graveyard that could cause trouble here. But I just, I, that Chaos Angel in my extra deck right now looks incredibly promising, and therefore I think that absolutely has to be the next option that we're going for. I am kind of interested in why we did normal summon that Chandelier there, though, because we already had access to the Chaos Angel by just having... Stovey Toby and the Lovely on the field. And now we just gave our opponent a monster to work with. Like last time we played around having monsters on the field so perfectly. But now we just decided that we need a monster on the field instead. Okay. And still not super sure on how to handle this. But it looks like we do go for Welcome Labyrinth first of all. That is not going to be met with any response. Also, it should be noted that monster effects could have not been a response to this year anyways, as there is Lovely on the field. Okay, bringing out Lady Labyrinth now, using the additional effect now, because Labyrinth, Labyrinth, the field spell is on the field, and therefore making every Labyrinth trap card that you activate have an additional effect. It's not written on the card, as the card is already printed, but <laughs> basically it is as if it would have written on it now as well, saying, additionally, whenever you activate this card, you can just also destroy one card on your opponent's side of the field. And in that case, we did destroy some Sara D. Lotus. And now it is finally time for that Synchro 10 Summon. And we are going to bring out Chaos Angel, banishing Samsara D. Lotus, chaining the effect of Samsara D. Lotus, of course. We may as well Attributing itself to negate it. Linking off both the Chaos Angel and the Chandelier. And now I understand why we did summon the Chandelier as well. To go into the Muckwrecker, it does seem like we just want to go for a really big turn here with the Muckwrecker bringing back the Chaos Angel, discarding a card from our hand. That means the Chaos Angel will be able to trigger it again as it only has to be special summon and not synchro summon to activate its summon effect. And that is quite some damage on the field. I don't think it's enough just yet though. We need some additional damage. Or is it maybe enough? It could be very close. Like, Chaos Angel is 3,500. Lab uh, the, the Lady Labyrinth is 3,000. So I think we're missing 300 or 400 points of damage. It's super close. Let me remind myself how much Muckwrecker is on. Muckwrecker is 1,000 only. Okay, so that means we're missing 500 here at the moment. Five hundred life points left for Ivar, and I think Hot has no additional way of dealing damage here, and therefore we are going to be getting another turn. Ivar already grabbing his deck here. He wants to go into his turn. He has a way of dealing damage to his opponent's life points now, and there it is. We're picking up a card for a turn. Eva has the game again in his hands. For a moment, it seemed like Han would just end it all here, but he does get another chance. Ivar's turn it is. With only 500 life points left, he is about to maybe go for another comeback here. 
Welcome Labyrinth is being activated from hand though, and we're going to use the effect of Lady Labyrinth as well to set an additional trap card. And we bring out Ariana. We do destroy the opening of the Spirit Gates through the additional effect of Labyrinth Labyrinth. We're now going to use the effect of Yama. We did trigger the Yama because we destroyed an opponent's cards. Han, you should have learned. Don't destroy the cards of Eva. They're all going to do something. But we are also going to search ourselves a copy of the Kuklok, Labyrinth Kuklok. Of course, enabling cards. You just set this turn to be activated during that turn. So, what is next? It should be 2,700 life points for Han. Oh, actually, okay, we just got information from the judge that actually it is not 2,700 life points left for Han, but it is 3,700 life points as we apparently did not attack last turn with one of the monsters and therefore Han still with at least 3,700. I don't know whether it's going to make a huge difference because 3,700 and two, like if you can do 2,700 points of damage, you may as well be able to do 3,700, but we are going to see whether Eva is going to be able to do any kind of damage to stay in this match, to stay in this tournament. Let's face it, this game is going to decide the fortune of Eva in this entire tournament. If he loses here, he's out of it. He cannot reach the top 16 anymore. If he somehow finds a way to turn this around, he would still be a candidate for our top 16. But we are going to see here. Okay, and oh no, I said it last turn, it is happening again. We are triggering both the Chandrily and the Stolby Torby and also the Welcome Labyrinth. But there is Triple Tactic Talents. Triple Tactic Talents is used to draw cards. Eva just always uses that to draw cards. Is he going to find something valuable though? We did find a Nightmare Throne. Nightmare Throne is being activated. On activation, of course, again, taking one Fiend Monster with zero attack or death and either destroy it or add it to our hand. Where is this going to lead us to? Where is this going to bring, it, bring us? This may as well be the last turn of this duel. And Eva checking his options. There is now the Grave Squirmer again. Very valuable piece of engine for the Yubel deck nowadays. And we link it off for Salomon Great Armirage right away. And thinking whether he wants to respond in any way here. Almirage kind of cool because actually we can now uh, protect our monsters from the destruction of Dogmatica Punishment if we like. And uh, we saw that there was a Dogmatica Punishment in rotation for Han. So actually kind of a smart move to bring that Almirage out there. Eva contemplating his next move. He has to make it happen soon though. He is right now behind the life points, and if he wants to stay a factor in this tournament, he needs to eagerly win this game. Is he going to be able to? So, okay, I think it's on Han right now thinking. Yeah, or maybe they're just trying to figure out what the current life point situation is. That's what it, like they're they're having they're having a chat there. And
What's next? Okay, so uh as as it seems we have just uh we have a freeze free screen right now. Just give us a moment to figure that out. We're hopefully going to be back with the game in just a second. Okay, there it is again. Camera is back. But yeah, right now we have a one player face cam, uh, one player game cam, but we're going to fix that in just a second. Oh, there is a Typhon now, as we get, see on the field. Bird of Jubel also there. Are we going to find a way to get into this? Okay, all right. We are again trying to figure this out. Don't you worry. We are going to see some more Jubel gameplay. And we are going to see whether he will be able to turn this around. Of course, not an easy situation for him to be in. Okay, there we are again. Okay, there it is. We see Type 1, we see Spirit of Jubel, and we hopefully now see how this turn for Eva is going to play out. And yeah, they're smiling. They are aware of the situation. They have been told to stop playing for a little bit, but I think they are now back with us and they can continue to play. Yes, we do activate Welcome Labyrinth for Han. Of course, we did get some extra time for them going here. And therefore, they still have some time left on the clock, even though our timer has already run out. We are going to use Welcome Labyrinth, and we are going to destroy Typhon there. But, like, how did that Typhon get destroyed? Because I'm pretty sure we already destroyed the opening of the Spirit Gates that turn. Or did we, on purpose, with our own effect, destroy the Typhon? That must be the solution, then. Oh, actually, it's back over to Han, apparently. Turn is back over to Han, and Han is playing like a madman. Solemn Judgment on Chaos Angel coming in. And does he have a way? Is there a way for Ivar? He's down to 250 life points by paying those additional half of his life points for Solemn Judgment. Ivar is shaking his head. He doesn't really see a way of doing this anymore. And honestly, if we just use Solemn Judgment on the Summon of a Chaos Angel, why not bring it back with, uh, with the good old Muckraker that is already there on the field? Actually, kind of a cheap Judgment even. If you only have to pay 250 life points for it, right? So it does seem like we have timeout 